Good morning everyone! On this blessed morning, I have decided to make another charcuterie board. I know, I know, this is the third one in a row, but I'm really bugged by the fact that I couldn't get it right. So I promise, this is the last one and then I will make other stuff. And the reason why this is the last one, because I finally managed to get it right! So, as always, I started off by cutting out the shape for the board. Unlike previous times, this time I chose a more traditional shape. Following that, I proceeded to plane the board in order to make sure it is as plain as possible. My previous two boards, unfortunately, were not perfectly parallel to the surface they sat on. They didn't wobble or anything, but if you put a marble on it, then it would roll off. Once planing was completed, I proceeded to smooth the edges with trimming bits, so any mistakes I did while cutting with jigsaw would be remedied and fixed up. I have grown really attached to the steps since it ensures all my sides are perfectly perpendicular to the surface that they will be resting on. And this is where the main trick is! This is the secret to the perfect charcuterie board that I finally unlocked. I'm sanding the board before I do anything else to it. And I sand all of it, sides, top and bottom. I start with 80 grit and go up in 20 grit increments until I hit 220 grit. And then I go up in 30 grit increments until I hit 400 grit. Now that the board is plain and perfectly smooth to the touch, I can finally route the edges however I would like. I do a nice round edge on top and a Roman OG shape on the bottom for ease of picking it up. You can see my mom in the background, she actually came to visit and was nice enough to hold the board for me so I didn't have to bother clamping it up. Now that the board is perfect and ready, I sand it once more. This time however, I start at 340 grit and go all the way up to 800 grit. And by doing so, I ensure that the nice features I made with my router are not going to be erased by the sandpaper. I fully understand that sanding to 800 grit might make it so that the board doesn't drink enough oil, but I really made sure to get that oil in there. Two coats of salmon oil were generously applied. Once the board was nice and oily, I finished it off with waxing and it was completed. I have finally achieved what I wanted. This is the board I wanted to make and it ended up being exactly how I envisioned it. I can now proudly say that I know how to make charcuterie boards. Yes, I understand, there are more things to learn, such as making groove to hold zipping containers, but I will get to it eventually. Skill to make basic charcuterie board has been attained. I will just have to solidify it in the upcoming month and then I can take it further to the next level later on. So I do apologize, there might be more charcuterie boards coming up in the future, but not anytime soon. If you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making this, please consider leaving a like and maybe subscribing. I try to release videos every Saturday morning. If you happen to have any questions or comments or just want to say something or say hi, those are very welcome too. I can't believe it, I finally managed to make a good charcuterie board. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week where we'll make something other than a charcuterie board. Bye bye!